OCO, I hold us up. Welcome to the Red Road East. I'm your host, Fierce Truth Seeker. Okay, so picking up where we left off, um, well, first I'd like to begin by saying that this is part three. Wait a minute, let me see. Are we on part three? Let me check. Let me see. One. Let's see here. Give me one second. Let me see. Second and first. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. This is part three of the pheasant feather connection. The Empire Strikes Black, okay? And if you didn't see The Empire Strikes Black 1 and 2, I suggest that you start from the beginning, okay? Um, it would be better because if you start from... Three onward, then you're going to be lost because we're talking about the lineage of the Aboriginal movement. Okay? And if you're talking about lineage, you can't start in the middle and work your way forward. Okay? You got to see what came before. Okay? Before you come up to this point. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, so let's see here. We left off at um, Brother Hakeem Bay and his journal of the Moorish pa journals of the Moorish paradigm. Okay, and I have to. Before I go any further, inform you that there are two Hakim Bays. Okay, uh, there's a Hakim Bay, uh, a European gentleman who is uh, affiliated with the Moorish Orthodox Church. Okay, and. That's not the same Hakeem Bay. This is Hakeem H.Y. Bay. Okay. And um, so if you want to do your research on him, you have to look, you know, make sure that you don't get the two confused. You have to make that distinction. All right. So we were looking at, from the last clip, we were looking at the Morris Paradigm and Hakeem's lectures and stuff that he did, you know, we're talking about that um, back in the days. And so moving forward, we we're looking at this Moorish paradigm from back in the 90s, all right? And we're looking at the table of contents because... What I want you to see is that what they call the Aboriginal movement today is not new. And we're looking at the literature that was out back in the days, okay? 
before there was the new Aboriginal movement. Again, I call it the new Aboriginal movement because it's a different narrative than the original Aboriginal movement, okay? Um, which was before YouTube and all of this stuff, you know. So, the Journal of the Moorish Paradigm, this particular journal, Table of Contents, The Greatest Unknown Man, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, Atlantis is code for our ancient civilization, the destruction of Atlantis. We are aboriginal by birthright. We are African by birthright. We are aboriginal by birthright. Okay, so as you can see, and you look at the dates, 1997, to 2005, okay, uh, copyright for this journal of the Moorish, journals of the Moorish paradigm, okay, those journals, okay, so, this aboriginal thought was going on, <laughs> You know, because some people think that, you know, it just started, you know, with the new Aboriginal movement. All right. So. All right. So Aboriginal, but we are Aboriginal by birth, right? Ancient Olmec artifacts of our ancestor in America. Our ancestors in Africa. Our ancestors in Africa. Our ancestors in Africa? No. Follow. Look at the look at the cursor. Look at the arrow. Ancient Olmec artifacts of our ancestors in America. Ancient Mayan artifacts of our ancestors in America. Of whose? Ancestors in America, our ancestors in America, the original Arawax, Californians, Andeans, the first Americans, red or black, archaeology article, okay, Canaanite in Mexico, Echua, largest pyramid is found in Mexico, Mound Builder Artifacts of Our Ancestors in America. Of Our Ancestors in Africa? Mound Builder Artifacts of Our Ancestors in Africa? Mound Builder Artifacts of Our Ancestors in Africa? No. Mound Builder, Mound Builder Artifacts of Our Ancestors in America. The Ben Ishmael Tribe of North America. Indians? Question mark. Our Aboriginal relatives in the Northeastern United States. Our African relatives in the Northeastern United States? No. Our Aboriginal relatives in the Northeast United States. Document from the Moroccan mission in New York. Europeans enslaved by Moors, women in harems. An American captain delivers tribute to the Moors. A treaty between Morocco and the United States, 1787. Moors recognized as citizens in Dred Scott case. Okay? So... Here's an excerpt from 
inside of the journal. The European education system would have us believe that all of us were brought over here to this hemisphere from Africa in slave ships. The Moorish elders taught us that we were always here. Sound familiar? The Prophet Noble Jurali referred to our dominions as a mexum and said that it extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa across the great Atlantis, even unto the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands, the Caribbean. These are the extent of our inherited lands and birthrights as taught to us by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. This geographical description of our dominions is very similar to the description of the dominions of Atlantis described by Plato. Plato said, Now, in the island of Atlantis, there was a great and wonderful empire which had rule over the whole island and several others, Caribbean as well as parts of the continent, North, South, and Central America. And besides these, <clears throat> and besides these, they subjugated parts of Libya, Africa, within the columns of Hercules, Gibraltar, as far as Egypt, and of Europe, as far as Tyrrhenia. A comparison of the Prophet Noble Drew Ali's description of a Mexum and Plato's description of Atlantis will make it plainly evident that they were both referring to the same place or civilization. We and our brothers and sisters in Africa are actually the direct descendants of the ancient Atlanteans and our civilization was the one mystically referred to as Atlantis. by the Europeans, I'm sorry, yeah, by the Europeans, students of ancient civilization. The ancient Moors are known in history as the ancient descendants of Ham, Cush, Canaan, Phoenician, Moabites, etc. The destruction of Atlantis was actually the result of a series of worldwide cataclysms that took place around 1500 B.C. or 3,500 years ago. Plato said Atlantis sunk around 9,000 years before Salome, the Greek philosopher, who lived around 600 BC. But it seems that somewhere along the line, an extra zero got added to the time span. Thus, it was actually 900 years before Salome, as opposed to 9,000 years. 900 years before Salome would be around 1500 BC as the date of the destruction of Atlantis. This date would match the geological records showing global upheaval dated at 1500 BC. Okay? So, I mean, what more do you have to say? You know? Um, all right, so I'm looking at the time. So we want to keep it at 30 minutes. Okay. And keep it consistent with the other parts. All right. So let's continue. The Moorish paradigm versus the black Indian paradigm, okay? Those of us who professed that black people were aboriginal to the Americas were frowned upon by other brown-skinned people who claimed to be black Indians, okay? This is a fact, all right? Back in the days when I would go to powwows and I would try to relay this information to these Negroes, I'll get into all kind of arguments and debates, all right? 
And we spoke about that in the last presentation. So I'm not going to get back into that. It's going to get me all worked up and angry. Okay. You know, um, y'all don't know. It was, we opened doors for you people that are calling yourselves Aborigines today. Okay. A lot of doors. All right. Um, black Indians at that time came in three categories. Tribally, one, tribally enrolled and saw themselves as different from other quote unquote blacks or other copper colored people. All right. Two, brown skinned not tribally enrolled, but were wannabes. They saw themselves as different from other copper-colored people and professed that they were not, quote-unquote, black, such as, like I told you before, that self-proclaimed Queen's Public Access Indigenous TV program host. Her and a host of others. Three, those, professed, those who professed to be black Indians and products of runaway African slaves and were equally proud of both heritages. Okay. There was no aboriginal movement as we know it today other than the Moors. Okay at that time. Uh, so, Brother Hakeem Bey, these are some links if you want to, <clears throat> if you want to see, you know, more in depth, the information that he brought forth Back in those days with all the visuals and stuff, you know, like I was talking about, you know, these are some links. Well, this is a link right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. HTTPS colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark lowercase v equals capital D L W V lowercase B as in boy, uppercase D as in dog, lowercase C as in cat, the number eight O R G. As a matter of fact, let me just I think I have here. Um I think I have here a screenshot. Let's see. No, I don't. Actually, just type in uh, what they never taught you in history class and also type in Journal of the Moorish Paradigm, okay? And you'll see that everything that people who call themselves Aborigines today, you'll see verbatim the information, okay? And again, you know, I mentioned others that came and did the same thing like Jose Pimienta Bay. Look up Jose Pimienta Bay. You know, this is another brother who used to speak at the metaphysical, the gathering of the metaphysical masters at 
Phil Valentine's place back in the days. Uh, Brother Knocking Bay, not Hocking Bay, Knocking with an N, Knocking Bay uh, from the Clock of Destiny. All right. He was another one. He's another brother that I saw back in the days, you know, um, him, Hakeem Bay, you know, all those guys used to come through Phil Valentine's place, you know, and they would, they would just be dropping, man, you know, and these are the guys that definitely inspired me, you know, definitely inspired me, and Nakim Bay, Clock of Destiny, and uh, let's see what else here. Right off, um, okay, so yeah, so you know the Gathering of the Masters, all kind of people that you have seen on YouTube clips and stuff like that that you probably didn't know about, um, didn't know went back so far. You know, a lot of times when you look at things on YouTube, you know, you think those are current videos, you know, but, you know, a lot of those videos that are uploaded, you know, you see the current date on it, but, you know, those, a lot of those lectures, you know, go way back, you know, into the 90s, you know early 2000s and stuff like that. So, back during this same time frame, you know, I was walking the red road, you know, and learning about the culture. I started, uh, I became an apprentice to a shaman, you know, started studying shamanism and uh, quote unquote Native American spirituality, you know, studying the language, you know, and around that time, I was studying with a bishop, um, a metaphysician out in Brooklyn named Bishop Stokes. Uh, they had a place called the Universal, he had a, a temple called the Universal Temple of Thoughts right on Bedford Avenue. It's not there now. They, the family sold that. It was a big, huge, huge place right on the corner of Bedford after you come down past, uh, um, uh, what you call it, um, uh, right there and in, 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 in after you hit uh, Eastern Parkway. All right. And, uh, wait a minute, I think, wait, let me see. Um, so my, my memory is, I don't think, wait, it wasn't quite that far. Let me see, was it that far down? Let me see, let me think of. I think it was Empire. I'm bugging. Empire. Yeah, when you pass Empire. That's what it was. You pass Empire Boulevard. A couple of blocks down, you see the Universal Temple of Thoughts. You know, big, big, big building. And the bishop used to rent out the spaces for different events and stuff like that. People would have parties there and, you know, you could rent it out for lectures. So, you know, it, it, there's a lot of space that wasn't being utilized. So, you know, we were helping, helping him with that, you know, to start helping to generate some funds and things of that nature. So, you know, we started doing lectures and stuff there and me and a uh, group of others, group a, a group of my associates there, we organized a lecture entitled Black Shamans Speak Out. And we invited people from the indigenous community and Moors to speak at the temple. And 
what was very interesting to me is that after the lecture was over, the bishop's brother, you know, his, his brother was a seer. And he told me, he said, brother, he came, came right to me. He said, brother, you know, y'all brought down some heavy, heavy ancestral spirits. And I was like, wow. You know, because that's, that's what he, you know, he, he's a, he was a seer, you know. And he says, the Indians, you know, they were black. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. And he was like, no, no, brother. I mean, those Indians, he's talking about the spirits, you know, they were black. And, you know, though I didn't see them myself, I knew the history and stuff like that. But, you know, that was like some really good confirmation for me, you know, that, you know, I was walking the right path. You know, and so from, you know, from that era on, I stayed on the red road, you know, and we had the more, you know, we had the Moors there, a lot, a lot of people there, man. And, you know, as always, you know, Moors were dropping heavy, you know, and Moors always kept it, kept the history in perspective, you know, you're like, Letting it be known that we predate the people that you call Indians. Okay? That was always made known. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, now we're looking at publications. This is another, uh, these are some more publications during that era. See, and it's important to look at the publications because I don't want to just talk. You know, you can't just talk. You know, talk is cheap. You know, if anybody... wants to say that they predated the Moors with this Aboriginal information. I say produce the literature. You see? And that's how I can speak with authority because I know the literature that was out during that time. Okay, you look at the literature put out about Indians that look like us, the literature at that time is going to talk about Africans, dual heritage, African runaway slaves, and Indians. Okay. So these are two publications, you know, there's a whole lot, <laughs> a whole lot of these publications at that time, you know, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I'll be here all day just, you know, putting up literature. So, you know, I just want to get y'all an idea of what was going on so that you can understand the lineage, okay? Who, the who, the what, the when, the where. The why. You understand? You overstand? You understand? Okay. And, man, these books here, it's just like uh, Brother Sharif Bey was saying in, Brother Sharif Bey was saying in, on one of his videos, these publications back in the days, man, like you say, these were like crack. You know, these were like crack, man. I mean, when he said that, I a big smile came on my face because 
I know, man. This is true. These were like crack, my brother, my sister. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I gotta check the lips for the ash, you know? As I told you in the last video, you know, mom, she always lets me know, you know, a couple of them videos, bro, like needed some chapstick. All right? Cool. All right, so now we Gucci. Her thing Gucci. All right, so. The Moorish Order of the Round Table. Tosh Tariq Bey. These books are something else, man. The Great Seal of the Asiatic Moorish Nation of North America. al Morak, a Mexum. Moorish al Moroccans, the true noble inheritors of the land. Wait, wait, wait. The true noble inheritors of which land? Okay, let's go back. The great seal of the Asiatic Moorish nation of North America, al Morocco. al Morocco. Africa? Al Morocco, Africa? Al Morocco, Africa? No. Al Morocco, North America. Okay? So, it was Moors who were first saying that Al Morocco, Morocco, was is America. Okay. A maxim. The sovereigns of freehold status. Draw. Okay. Here was another publication. To be or not to be bound. That's the Moorish question. All right. Next slide. Oh, man, we're running out of time, man. I can't believe it. Okay, let's dig into the literature. Okay, so first edition. First printing, June 1995. Dr. Hannibal D. Con Bay. Okay. MSD. Copyright. 1995. Alright? So, I mean, it's not much arguing you can do with that. We're looking at the literature. Okay? So now, on page 41, Sheikh Sharif Abdul, well, we don't have to read all of that. We'll, 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 we'll go down a little bit. Well, let's read it. Okay, I'm concerned about the time, but all right. Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali, Noble Jurali. Many people don't know or understand what Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali, peace be upon him, had done for us as a nation. Instead, you heard he was a religious political cult. What is not told to the public is that he was responsible for many things. For one, he retrieved the national flag from Independence Hall, hidden by this government. The flag was part of many fabled stories. One in particular is the proverbial cherry tree, George Washington chopped down, meaning he finally defeated the Moors. Okay, I'm going to skip down a little bit because we have five minutes left. All right. The history books will not tell you these things because 
They want you to believe in the lie that you were brought here from overseas. Let me ask you this. Do not the archaeologists find hundreds of dinosaur bones, which are millions of years old? Then you mean to tell me that these so-called experts and grave robbers cannot go back a fraction of that time, three or four hundred years, to tell you who you are and what part of Africa they so-called grabbed you from as slaves? And furthermore, the proof of the ship, of the proof of the shipyards from which these ships were built. Also, I'd like to know who, who brought the ship. Pardon me, this, the, the, the font is so, the this clip is so small. I'm going to have to expand this a little bit. Very hard on my eyes. Who bought the shipyards with the maritime records of the slave trade? And who owns them today? Does this, found, does this sound familiar, guys, gals, kings, queens? Does this narrative sound familiar? Okay? And I'm not calling any names, but I'm just setting the record straight. Okay? As far as the timeline. Who owns them today? The reason why I ask these questions is because everyone knows when you're dealing with maritime travel, a captain keeps records for his employer. Furthermore, where was the food stored so as to feed the crew? Remember, the journey was supposed to last three to six months to arrive here. See picture. Now you say the European slave masters carried fruit. I ask this, what refrigeration, what refrigeration system that, that they use to keep it fresh? Our modern day systems at stores, our modern day system at stores cannot keep all their produce fresh before consumption. Ask any store manager about his or her regular routine with produce. It is all a lie. It's unfounded truth they concocted. They claim to have crammed your ancestor and your ancestors as tight as possible on the ship. I ask you to compare our ships today to those ships of the past. They cannot compare to today's large ships. Okay? This is 1995. Okay, 1995. So who are the preservers and custodians of this knowledge? Okay, who are the custodians and preservers of this knowledge? The Moors. Okay, and here we go. The picture of the slave ship. The so called slave ship that brought all of y'all over here from the so called slave trade. Again, not that the slave trade didn't happen, but it didn't happen like. Y'all think it happened. Okay? So, all right, let's look at this here. Let me expand this a little bit. So here it says, We're not even talking about the urine and feces that the slaves would have, that the slaves would be floating in. I say to you scholars, PhDs, MBAs, LLDs, etc., 
Use common sense. Use your math to bring. Use your math you bring. Um, no, not bring, brag. Use your math you brag so much about that you have learned. It does not add up correctly. You all fell for that trick. Why do you think the slave master did not want you want your four parents to read? They were changing the history around to fit their needs to enslave you mentally after chattel slavery. And you so-called and to you so-called black history scholars, I say, teach the people the truth. Remember, God Allah don't like ugly. Okay? And that's time. Alright, so I would like to go further, but we're going to stop here. And let me see, are we halfway through yet? We're still not even halfway through. So, all right, we're almost halfway through. Okay? Oh, man, it's, 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 it's a lot to cover, you know. But, you know, I want to, you know, we have to, Take the narrative back and put everything in its proper perspective. You know, I'm tired of having to spank all of you people. You know, I'm not cussing, you know, <laughs> all of you people who come on my page and talk that nonsense. All right, you're getting a spanking. You're getting a whooping right now. You're getting that whooping. You're getting a whooping. All right, you know, your daddy coming to spank you. All right, Papa don't take no mess, like James Brown said. All right, so. You know, got to put everything in proper perspective. Got to look at the history, you know, and tell the truth. You know, it's about telling the truth, okay? So, I don't know if I'll be able to do the part four today because I have other things to do. And then... You know, a lot of people are not are not even looking at the video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm looking, you know, and this ain't even monetized. This this is this is a, a labor of love. You know what I'm saying? This is a labor of love. You you feel me? You know, I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna rush to put the information out, you know, if people are not looking at the video, like, you know. There's like almost a hundred people that looked at the last video and there's only like 10 thumbs up, you know, so I'm not, you know, I'm going to let y'all marinate. It ain't even no, and ain't even any new subscribers. So, you know, I'm going to let y'all marinate on this information. You know, if you want it, come get it. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more where this came from. I got archives of knowledge. Archives of documents, books, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I could, I could do this for days. I could do this for days without repeating information. Okay? So, but, you know, hey, I'm not going to do this for my help. <laughs> yeah, I got better things to do with my time. People are not even going to thumbs up the video. It's not monetized. I ain't making no money off this. This is labor of love. So, you know, you want it, come get it. You know what I'm saying? Holla, give, you know, shoot, shoot a comment if you like it, you know. But I think I'm just going to chill with with the rest of this, you know. There's a whole lot more. It's a whole lot more. You know, we're not even halfway done, you know. But, you know, until the next time, da-da-da, gonna haunt you.